Right, so this is the start of the Handycon uh, video log. This is uh, Handycon 4, and we have arrived at the Holiday Inn in Maidenhead, although Steve's not sure whether this is actually the correct hotel or not. So we're gonna, we're gonna go in and find out if we are indeed at the right place. Right, so we're definitely in the right place. Uh, this is this is where Handicon is going to be. And I think Steve's already found the games room. So you found the games room already, Steve? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so this is where we're gonna be. So um, Gloomhaven expansion. <laughs> Gloomhaven expansion. Excellent. Yeah, I think I think I think maybe we just stay here for uh, for a few days. We'll uh, we'll definitely come up with some house rules. Uh, for these games. So yes, we have arrived, we're at the right place, time to check in. So we're in the bar area, uh, so it's Thursday evening. Handicon doesn't officially open until tomorrow morning, uh, but there's a few people in the bar area uh, right now. So there's a game of Heaven and Nail going on. Looks like there's a game of Eon's End as well. So yeah, so the game has already started uh, in here. Oh, it looks like there's a game of Abyss starting here. Yep. Um, so yeah, as a, this is the this is the Thursday night before Handicon actually starts. But there's a lot of people that I know that are getting here early. Um, so yeah, I'm planning to play some games myself tonight. Shock horror. Right. So it is Friday morning. Uh, Handicon has officially begun. This is the the main gaming room here. Uh, not everybody's up yet. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a good start to the convention. I'm set up over here in the corner. So this is the gaming rules area, so where I will be demoing games this weekend. So we have Newton going on in the corner, which I'm not demoing. Um, but a few friends of mine have borrowed my copy and are playing Newton. And then these are the games which I'm going to be uh, showing off to people this weekend. Um, so Keith Forge. Now this this copy of Pulsar 2849 is thanks to Luke Hector from the Broken Meeple. I'm running demos of this all weekend, and I've forgotten to bring my copy with me, uh, like a complete idiot. So yeah, these are some of the games that I'm going to be demoing this weekend. My first demo starts at 11 o'clock. We've also got some playtesting tables. Uh, so David Digby's here with his game, and um, yeah, Handicon's got a bit something for everybody really. Um, so yeah, people who have got their own games that they want playtesting are coming here. Uh, James is here with his uh, with his Lego game, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, more people should use Lego for prototypes. Um, so this is Magnate. There you go, a bit about that. Um, and yeah, there's various other games going on. Um, one of the other cool things that the organisers have put on is they have special tables for some popular games. So this is the saloon for Great Western Trail. So anybody who wants to play Great Western Trail. Um, can play it here. They've called it the immersive gaming zone, which is uh, which is quite cool because this game is is it's a good game and it's so popular it, it's it's bound to be played a lot. Um, we also have Dinosaur Island being played here, and we also have Viticulture. Now I don't know. I think people have started a little bit early on the wine this morning, um, but yeah. So this is the immersive gaming zone that they've put on, which is uh, which is pretty cool. So yeah, we're just getting started. I probably won't be able to do that many more videos today because I'll be busy demoing. But yeah, this is just the start of Handicon. <laughs> so my first demo is running. Uh, they wanted a, a nice, quick, easy game. So we're playing four-player Jetpack Joyride from uh, Lucky Dog Games. So yeah, this is the this is one of the games that I brought here this weekend. Uh, it's nice because it, it, it says 30 minutes, and it's probably about 30 minutes, but it's uh, it's good fun, fairly quick, and yeah, one of the games that I'm demoing this weekend. Okay, so I'm at Handicon, and a game of Newton has just been finished, and I'm here with the three players, um, so we'll find out initial impressions, what they think about it. Really so, Paul, like you've it. got the lapel mic first. Yeah. Initial impression. Really like it. Okay. Yeah. Then I like all those stuff. Right. So, anything in particular? It's got a bit of a feeling of Mombasa about it, and I okay. Mombasa is one of my favourite games. Right. It, it's definitely got some similarities to Mombasa, but it's because good, of the because of the way the cards work on here. Right. Okay. Um, but and how long did it take you to play this game? Just over an hour. All oh, right. And, and you, so Ian, you'd read the rules beforehand, or you'd you'd watch the Antlad video. I'd, I'd watch. Uh, it's past the. Um, just just hold it in front of you. There we go. All modern technology here. Yes. So um, I I watched the playthrough by Antlab Games. Yeah. It only came out at Gen Con. Yeah. And there was only 100 copies, so there's nothing out there. But 
We did have a lot of looking in the rule book this yeah. morning, and but even with that, it's taken just over an hour. Oh yeah, is the, it just the, over an hour? The, it's probably about an hour and a half, actually, because it's nearly one o'clock. What time yeah, did we, you start? We, uh, no, it's probably close to two hours, and we, we two started hours. just okay. before eleven. Okay, so yeah, about um, two hours then for a first game. If, if we were to play it again now, it would easily be an hour and a half. Like okay, four. so your initial impressions. Really good. I really okay. like it. Um, I like uh, there are there are other games, Marco Polo yep. and um, Marco Polo really like Lorenzo Mancho. I also like terrible is it? Right, okay. <laughs> um, but it's it's really interesting because I won but I went a kind of different way to what I think the game, you know, the game is kind of designed to to fill this board in which has maybe has the, the book tiles on kind of collecting knowledge as you go around Europe, whereas okay. I focused more on actually moving around Europe and apparently getting money, um, but I didn't do much on the tech track here, which this this tech tree, which is actually a tree. Um, I didn't oh, it is a tree. Do, I, did not, a tree. Oh. I did not do very much here at all. Um, okay. But if you look at Paul's board, yeah. Paul went heavily into getting books. So, plus the mic back. so Paul, you were saying it's not all about the books. Um, I think there's different ways you can play it. Right. If you could get that filled in how I have earlier, I didn't get most of that until the last round. Okay. So I only really scored all that stuff at the end. If I'd been scoring more of that during the game, I'd have done a little bit better. Okay. Whereas Ian got some of these cards out very early, I didn't get them out until very late. And, every, and as a consequence, everyone beat me to get in these end game scoring tiles. Right. Uh, which was a bit of a pain for me. Okay. It cost me quite a lot in the end. So Ian won by, by a long way, or was it close? A long way ahead of me. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, pass the mic over to Louis. So what did you think? Because we've had two very good so far. I really, really love it. Okay, so that's yeah. a three out of three. Totally. Fan of their games anyway. Yeah. So uh, this ticks all the boxes. Like Paul said, I think it has got a Mombasa vibe about it. Right. Um, there's a lot to think about, which isn't obvious to begin with. It looks quite superficial when it okay. first starts, but the depth builds massively. Right. So you were saying that obviously it's from the same design team as Marco Polo and Lorenzo. So if you like those, you're it's probably going to like yeah, this one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So that's a very quick first impressions of Newton. Thank you very much, everybody, and it's a three out of three, all positive. Yeah, is this is the end of the game. The lamp is not here. No, but yeah, but these are the triggering. We take the effects of that. Anything else? Do you want to do card related? Joe? Mr. Joe? No, I never used the so, no, I, no, I, I took this card and I can have it. So we've just been playing another game of Keyforge with Pete and Martin. Game's finished. Martin, initial impressions. I thought it was very interesting. Um, it's very different to Garfield's other games, although there are a few similarities to a few things, like your creatures act individually, like they do in uh, Jihad, the Vitez game. Um, there's not very many similarities to Magic at all. Um, um, and the way you kind of recycle through your deck was quite interesting. Did you kind went of, through your decks? I went through my deck twice. Once, twice. Twice. Yeah, twice. And I think okay. You went through twice as well. Right. Okay. Now, we had quite a protracted game, I think, because um, there was in both of our decks quite a lot of delaying yeah. uh, tactics. So we, we don't know yet whether that's in all decks because these are the only two decks I've got. Although it did seem to be from specific houses that we shared shared that house. Right. So, okay. Uh, so how much did you know about this game coming into this weekend? Broadly, the the aim of it. Right. Other than that, nothing. I hadn't seen the cards, yep. uh, hadn't seen uh, the houses, what they did or anything like that, right. how different they were. I just knew kind of what the aim was to get the three crabs, keys, keys, keys yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and how you got them spending it. Okay. So it initial up. impression? I thought it was very good and right. I think I'd probably buy it double. I don't think I'd buy a huge amount of it because I don't feel you need to. I'd get a few decks so they were different enough yeah. and I think that would be enough to dip your toe. Certainly. Yeah. There you go. So that's Martin's impression of Keyforge. Oh, 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 oh,
there. Oh, there, yeah, so you do need to avoid those two, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, go into the gang, you need five bucks to visit them. And then you grab the two gangs and stick your disc on there to show them. Nope. Oh, it's Wow Stuart! Each player starts with a corporation card. They will have a starting budget uh, and goals related to it. <laughs> 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 Hello from Handicon. So I'm here with Matt Evans from Creaky Shelves. Hello. Thank you very much for joining me. And we're going to be talking about some of the games that Matt has played this weekend because I've inflicted three games on him. Yes. Uh, let's go through them. So War Chest, we just played. Did you know anything about this beforehand? Uh, I'd seen a bit of your previous video, right. where your playthrough of it. Um, okay. I hadn't looked into too much detail because right. it's kind of a skirmish game, yeah. two-player skirmish game, which isn't the kind of game I tend to mm. really gravitate towards. Me too. So we've literally just finished playing it. Initial impressions? Very good. Okay. Like, like as, as I said, I had low expectations, um, but I really quite enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. um, How long did it take us? I mean, half an hour yeah. With teaching. With teaching, yeah. yeah. So it is a, it is a, it is a 20-minute game once you, once you get to know it, how to play it. Yeah, and it was very very easy to pick up yeah like within a couple of turns yeah very uh, very streamlined rules very simple but yeah. I've played it I don't know now six seven times something yeah. like that I'm really I'm really enjoying it and most of the people who I'm introducing it to are also enjoying it so this is from AEG it's not out yet well I think it was released at Gen Con uh, so it will be available in the UK I don't know but it is not going to Kickstarter this one's straight to retail I almost had him for a moment. You well. did. Yeah. So close. <laughs> right, so that's War Chest from AEG. Uh, next, we have a, a beaten up empty booster pack. I don't know if booster pack's the right word to call them. So this is Key Forge, uh, the new game from Fantasy Flight. If you don't know what this is, this is one of the hot new things that came out of Gen Con. Um, because it's by Richard Garfield, the designer of Magic the Gathering. Uh, but it's not collectible. Well, sort of. It's not tradable. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is a two-player dueling combat card game, but when you buy one of these packs, you get a deck. It doesn't come in sleeves. Um, and that's your deck. You will never, ever change that deck. This is your 36-card deck. It is what it is. There's no trading. You don't swap out cards. There's no deck construction element of this game. Um, and what's very cool about the game is a computer algorithm generated this deck and it is playable, it's perfectly playable. And this card back is also computer generated based on the algorithm. Yeah. Nobody else anywhere in the world will have this exact deck. And as I say, you can't, you can't trade cards with each other, you can't chop out and change cards, you just play the deck as it is. Yeah. It's a brave new idea. Um, from what I got told, Richard Garfield came to FFG three years ago and had this idea and they went, it's not possible. <laughs> and they've spent 18 months working on with the printers and the computers and everything else on how to make it possible. So as a concept, it's fascinating and it's got a yes. lot of people talking about it. I'm a Magic player of old. I've dabbled with lots of these card games. I generally don't care about these card games either. Basically, Paul's made me play a bunch of games I didn't want to yeah, play. Yeah, basically. Uh. <laughs> so we played it. We didn't quite finish the game because I had to run off and do another demo. Yeah, had him on the ropes. But let's talk about the gameplay, because that's the most important thing. The idea behind this might be all cool and fascinating, but if the gameplay doesn't hold up, then it's just a fantastic idea that doesn't actually work in principle. Gameplay. I've not asked you about this, because I had to dash off. Yeah. Um, so, I don't think I liked it as much immediately as War Chest, but that, I felt, was simply because I it took me a little bit longer to get a feel for it. Yeah. Whereas it was painfully obvious that Paul knew his deck. <laughs> yes. Um, so, 
he was definitely kind of dominating. Mm -hmm. But I, I was getting to the point just before we finished where I really could have set up some good combos yeah. had I known the rules better yes. <laughs> and actually read the card properly. Yeah. And to um, be fair, I dropped I dropped Martin at the deep end and didn't teach him the rules of the game. We were learning as we went. Yeah. And I said, turn by I, turn. I'd turn. played yeah. that deck that I was playing against you at least twice, possibly three times. So I knew what was in the deck. I knew what was coming, and I kind of knew a little bit how to play that deck. Mm. Whereas you would, you would just was, learn. I was discovering it as I was playing cards. Yeah. So. And the discovery thing is the is the buzzword that FFG used on me when they were telling me yeah. about it. Richard Garfield wanted Magic: The Gathering to be a game of discovery, in that people would discover new things to do, and that no two players in the world would have the same deck. Yeah. Well, that that went out the window because of the internet. Oh. So one week after a new set of Magic comes out. Oh, here's right, the best sorry, decks, and yeah. people were building decks. And you sit at a tournament in Magic, and on the first turn he goes mountain tap, goblin, whatever, and you know what the deck is because yeah. you know the meta. In this game, you'll sit opposite your opponent. You have no idea what the deck's going to do at yeah. all. So he wanted the game to be more about discovery, and the more you play your own deck, the more you'll discover how it works. But the fact is, it wasn't generated by a human being. It yeah. was a a complex computer algorithm that generated. Yes. So anyway, back to the gameplay. It's obviously more complicated than War Chest. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, it, I, it's, it was enough to intrigue me. I like yep. you have the three different factions in your deck and mm -hmm. you can only ever trigger one of their your factions per, on your turn. Yep. So you can get all, out a whole bunch of monsters one turn and then you can't do anything with all the cards in your hand the next turn, but you can just trigger the stuff yeah. you put out. I found the it cycles very quickly. Yes. Like you could set up a whole bunch of stuff, but then there are some just auto Bang, reset. boom. So don't get attached to anything. No, no, no. Things things don't seem to stick around for long. Yeah. And I've played this now, I say five, six times. The game needs that. Yeah, there's a bit of an engine buildery element because you're not trying to kill the other player. You're trying to collect yes. uh, enough bits in order to create forge the keys. Yep. Um, and that's how you're winning. So. I can see why it's there, absolutely. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. So is this something that you... I'm, I mean, like, it's they've, they've said it very cleverly. Like, I mean, the decks are like a tenner. Ten, ten dollars. So ten what, dollars, what they'll be in the UK is less, probably eight, eight, eight pound, yeah. seven pound online or something like that. You buy it, that's your deck. Yeah, so other than the few bits of components you even could proxy... Which um, we have which proxied, we have literally yeah, because I don't have the starter set. So. Um... Like, just pick up one just to try out and see whether I like playing that deck. Yeah. And it's like you say, you just learn to play that one deck. And There's if you don't like that deck... Massive meta to worry about. You yeah. trade that deck with somebody else. Yeah. You say, I don't like yeah. this deck. Here you go. And, and it's uh, you trade cheap enough. Somebody else. It's totally cheap enough just to take a punt on it and I think see so. how it plays out, right? So, yes. New card game, Fantasy Flight games, Keyforge. The third game we're going to talk about... Which I don't have the box here because somebody has. There is a digital box right yeah, here. Yeah, I'm going to edit in a digital box that. right here. So this is Newton. Uh, Newton was one of the hot games that came out of um, Gen Con, published by Cool Mini or Not. And apparently I have one of the only 100 copies in the world at the moment. It's been played four times this weekend, not by me. At least four times. At least I four mean, times. Paul has played it a different four. Had played it four times at least. Right. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, it's probably even more by now. So I've not played it yet, so I can't give my opinion on it. Although earlier on in this video, there was a bit of a video with some other people giving their opinions on it. You played it last night. I did. I really enjoyed it. Okay. Like really enjoyed it. But to qualify that, I won really hard. <laughs> so that's probably biasing me quite a lot. Okay. Um, yes. So you you get it. You open the box, and it is the beigest game in right. the world. So, you know, first impressions are, Jesus, what, what is this? Dry, boring Euro oh game. Oh, my God, could it ever be? Yeah. Right. Um, but then the play is very neat and uh, straightforward. You know, pick a card, play it, do the action. And then those that builds up. The more cards you have out and things set up, you can trigger more powerful actions by saving certain cards okay. between rounds yep. and things like that. And then just the combos I managed to pull off right. were crazy. Like, everyone else at the table stop and, like, jaw okay. drop type thing. And I don't know, like, whether that was good fortune. There was certainly a bit of just, oh, I've stumbled into this. Right. And I don't know to what extent 
you can expect to see that all the time. Okay. Because I got the impression that Paul had not You've ran not into seen that, that so before. much. Okay. You know? Um, but that felt, you know, incredible. Yeah. Obviously. Okay, so that's so. Newton from Cool Me or Not. And yeah, it's been played a few times. I've been asking people who've been playing it this weekend what do they think about it. And it's been thumbs up, I think, from everybody who's played it this weekend. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing it, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the great thing is, because I've lent it to a few of my friends who've learned how to play and played it, they're going to teach me Yay! how to play. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so thank you very much. So Warchest, Keyforge, Newton, I'm not going to ask you for your favourite because they're very different games. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean... Newton's my top, but that's so biased. It's, it, not even it, a it's a medium anymore. to heavy euro. It's also very much in my wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. Right. Um, Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for joining me, and we'll see you soon. Hello. So I'm here with another Paul, Paul Harris, who is the organizer of Handicon. Um, it's the Sunday. Handicon is, it's got a few hours left. I yeah, think. we finish at eight. So finish at eight. So. Like four and a half hours left. Yeah. So it's winding down. Tell us a bit about Handicon. Tell us what, what is Handicon? Handicon has become this incredible beast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it started two years ago. Um, I went to the UK Games Expo and loved the, ha the, the, the gaming areas. Right. I love the trade stand and things, but I, I felt I'd, I'd traded myself out right. after okay. a few hours. So I went back to the hotel in the Hilton and just gamed and gamed and gamed. And I went, this is brilliant. I, look, I want to sort of get the, the, the gaming bit. And right. then I, went, I looked around for conventions. I went to a few. I went to a few. Yep. I, want, I wanted to bottle it up and try and do a convention which was about the gaming, not about right. trading. Okay. So we did our first one. I found a, lo a, lo a small hotel near me and they were yeah. accommodating and we had, I managed to, so I beg, borrow and steal people and yeah. I got brought chairs from my school that yeah. I borrowed yeah. and uh, so that was 220 people we managed to Right, so that was Handicom 1. one. That was Handicom 1. Which, which was January 2016. 2017. 2017. 2017. 2017. So this is Handicon 4, because Handicon runs twice a year. It was going to be once a year, and I got oh, several right. emails saying, do, do another, do another. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I thought, I'll, I'll ask, and yeah. I spoke to the hotel, and they said, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try, and we've got, we've got, right. got a wedding on this weekend, so right. I squeezed me in. And okay. We got 275 on Handicon 2, and right. then 335 back in January. At which and, point? Well, the capacity was probably about 300, yeah. and we had 335, yeah. and it was busting at the seams yeah. so the day after what unbeknownst to the punter we we went off and um, explored this new hotel down the road right. and a series of negotiations were entered into yeah. and I got the heavies involved yeah. and sort of made sure that we got a good deal and, and right. the, 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 they, but we know we got we got uh, we set about trying to get some new get a new venue and yeah we and this is where here. we are this is where we are so now. Handicon 4 is at uh, Maidenhead Holiday Inn Maidenhead Holiday Inn capacity of we think we can get up to 800, 900. Right. We've had 500 tickets sold for this wow. weekend. 502 as of an hour ago. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so we've managed to get 500 tickets sold this time, which right. makes us the, we think, third biggest convention in the UK. Right. But the biggest that specialises just in open gaming and right. the game and not the trade fair side. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's, but um, what does Handicon offer? Because I go to a lot of the conventions. What does Handicon offer that's a little bit different from the other ones? So our raison d'etre, are, are what we want it to be, is an inclusive place where you can turn up on your own or you can come along and you're not used to the, the scene of even weekly gaming. You right. come along and you can learn games, you can meet new people, you can really sort of just get involved in, in any or anything and everything. I, I try and bring things to the table that people wouldn't be even thinking about. So we, this year we, I've I've got a few things that I was very excited about, mm -hmm. and they've gone quite well. Yeah. Like the, we've had Subutio, we've had Scale yeah. Electrics, we've had um, World Cup cricket on the front desk. Yeah. That people have just been playing just as they walk past yeah. the class. But we've also had some themed tables. Yeah. Um, I saw you looking around with those ones. We've got a Great Western Trails. So we, you, if you if you go through the main 
main hall at the moment. There's always there's nearly always people dressed in cowboy yes. hats playing great western yeah. trains. The immersive gaming area. Yes. So um, I think I showed that earlier on in the video. Okay. So Brilliant. That's cool. So, um, and you were in tournaments as well. Yeah. We um, Rich Rich is our tournament guru, and he we I gave him carte blanche to put whatever uh, right. tournaments he wanted in. He's a big flam rouge, so yeah. we, always, we always have the tour de handicon and. Right. Uh, he plans that out months in advance, but he's done a Gaia project and an Azul this time. Okay. So different sizes. Yeah, 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 the yeah. big spoon and the little spoon. The little spoon is always sort of something like Azul, a bit lighter. Right. And the, the big spoon is always something like a Gaia project. So a Gaia a bit, project. Bit, yeah, this time it was a Gaia project, yeah. and it's always something a bit heavier. But as well as all of that stuff that's happening, Handicon is just a place that if you just want to come here and play games, you can do that. You don't yes. have to get involved in these tournaments. You're not going to be dragged into a game of... Times up on a Saturday night. We will have <laughs> we will have people who are doing all sorts. We'll have yeah. people who are here and they just they're here with a partner and they sit playing games with their partner and yeah. enjoying the atmosphere. We'll have people who are fritting from group to group playing a different game with yeah. a different couple. We have we cater for as much as we can. Yeah. We have people who want to try, like learn new games. We have a few people who are coming and they've pretty much mapped out which games they're going to play and yes. what times. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. some people with like spreadsheets. Spreadsheet. Of, I'm Absolutely. playing this at this time. Yeah, and. So. So it's a, it's a bit of everything and it's a bit of, we just want to cater for whatever people yeah. want from the convention and okay. try and give a bit, bit of everything right. available to them. So Handicon 5? Handicon 5 is the 18th to the 20th of January 2019. I better start preparing, I thought it, it feels like it's about 20 minutes away. Yeah. Um, but actually, yeah, we've got five months, so, right. that should, it so the hotel's come all booked. around, the hotel's all sorted. Um, you can actually already get hotel rooms right. selling out fast, but you can go on the Holiday Inn website and use the HC5 right. code. I don't know where they came up with the code, but it's, it's HC5. Just random letters. It's random letters. Yeah. Like. Um, one, of the, one of the other things, um, so obviously 18XX is very big here. So right, okay. 18XX, it's almost an 18XX. XX con almost within right. within within a con club yeah. hidden away in a room upstairs with all the people who are far more intelligent than I am. Right. Okay. So there's those things going. Those people but, that can do maths. Exactly. Yeah. So there's um, so there's the bookings are being taken already online. Ticket sales are already right. launched. We've already got people booked in. And okay. So yeah, it's five months away, and I'll be this will all go go yeah. go again. <laughs> go again. So Handicon Five. If people want to find out more information www.handycon.co.uk There you go, I never thought that. But. Handycon Gaming on Twitter, yeah, follow Facebook. us, say, say hello. Um, we've got a Facebook group, Handycon Discussion is, what, is the one you'll find, but Handycon, go, if you go to the Handycon Facebook page, yeah. you give, give that a like and then you'll, you'll, you'll get access to all the information we share. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, well, we'd love to see you. It's, it's, uh, it's been going well. So it started it's, out, as you say, a couple of years ago, a couple of hundred people and now it's... 500 people. 500 people, yeah. What's going on? 40% growth this yeah. time around. So. And you're looking at carrying on twice a year? I, yeah, we, we want to carry on for twice a year and there's there are all sorts of things. We, we, we always run a survey afterwards. We want to find out what people liked, what people want to improve. Yeah. And so we're, we're, we're always looking to try and feed forwards. And, right. Um, there's been mooted possibility of a fourth day next August, two okay. years' time. I don't know if, I, if my little <laughs> tiny mind can cope with that, but we'll see. Yeah. But um, we're, we're always looking to improve it. I think we've definitely got the space in the hotel for, for 750 people, so right. it's definitely a room it to grow. Yeah. I don't know whether we would ever want to be sort of hiring out at Heathrow Airport and closing that right. down for the, for the weekend and having like thousands and thousands and thousands of people on the runway. Oh, okay. but, but for the moment, I think this, ho this it's, hotel... It's a good size. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we've got international people coming in here. Mm -hmm. We've got Peter per person travel all the way over from France yeah. by, by a coach. It took him hours and hours right, to get okay. here. Someone Did he just get lost on the way to... No, he, he uh, actually heard about it online and wanted to come and check right. it out. He's been here the whole time. He's had a great time. Okay. Um, we have 18XXs who've travelled from all sorts of different parts of, the, of England. We've got people Probably by train. Possibly, yes. Yeah. Uh, we've got people who've, who've come from the Isle of Wight. Cool. We've got, uh, we had someone, uh, a couple came over from Canada. So it's, right. it's becoming international. It so is. It's like, so if you're in Australia yeah, 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 and you're just, looking for a convention... Just pop over. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, OK, it would take more time to, to get here than the convention lasts, but no, it's yeah. a great time. Excellent. Right, well, thank you very much for this short interview just about Handicon. As I say, if you are interested, I'm here all the time. Well, not all the time, but when it's on. When it's on, yeah. When it's on. Right. Thank, thank you very you. much.